So any entrepreneurship that's going to ultimately be able to be sold or run on its own without you being behind the thing, unless you want to be, is income. That helps to increase that passive income coming into you so that you can do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with whom you want to do it. That's the definition of retirement, you guys. Be the change you want to see. Make a difference by giving your money a purpose, a mission to do good. Welcome to Money With Mission, where we show you how to create passive income so that you have options for how to work and how to live your life while leaving a legacy of positive social impact. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Money With Mission. Today, you have me. I'm going to do another solo episode, and we're still in the learn phase of our live framework. Learn, invest, value your time, and enjoy your life. Without each step, and we have to do them in order, otherwise you don't get to that enjoy. If you just jump right into investing, you'll learn and it'll be a painful lesson. Investing without knowledge costs a lot of money, costs a lot of time, and costs a lot of self-esteem for a lot of us. So we're in the learn phase. Last week, we talked about taxes, which are key to improving your financial status. And by that, I mean when you are paying less in taxes, when you are paying attention to that biggest expense in your lifetime and working to decrease that expense, just like you would work to decrease your electric bill if that was too high or your heating bill if that was too high, you have to work to decrease your tax liability so that you keep more money in your pocket, so that that money can work for you and bring more money back to you. Remember, the goal is to get your money to work for you. Send your money out into the world so that it comes back to you with babies and brothers and sisters and all kinds of family members so that you can then enjoy your life without having to worry about trading your time for dollars. Got it? If you didn't listen to that, go on back to that episode where we talk about taxes, the biggest expense in your lifetime. Today, I'm going to talk about how can you tell? I mean, how do I know if I've gone from middle class to rich or wealthy? Because a lot of times where people are making a lot of money, you have a great job, you're making six figures, maybe even making six figures, maybe even seven figures in your job. You're trading your time for dollars. Does that make you wealthy? Not according to the article I read in Yahoo Finance. It is about having a diversification of income that gets you through to into that transition from middle class to wealthy, not just you trading your times for dollars. Does that make sense? There's a mindset to it because I know there's people out there who have lots of diversification of income and still do not feel wealthy. If you can quit your job Decide one day I'm not going and know that you have enough money coming in from your other sources to cover your expenses. You are financially independent, financially free. You may or may not consider yourself wealthy and you have the ability to stop going to work. That is huge. Income from passive assets, passive income. I don't have to go to work for this money every day. It's going to come. Greater than your expenses is financial independence or financial freedom. We're not talking about having the money to go do all the trips and all that, but if you can cover your regular expenses, you are financially independent. Trust me, I want to be able to go on trips, so I need more money than just to cover my life expenses, food, housing. I need more than that, just like I'm sure most of you do too, want more than that. But that pure, pure definition of financial independence, financial freedom is passive income, greater than expenses, we get you there, okay? So how do you get to that wealthy? And remember, that's a mindset kind of thing in addition to that diversification of income. So hold on a second, we're gonna get into it. So that diversification strategy is crucial for building wealth and suggests a move towards that financial independence. We talked about that, diversification. And by diversification, I'm not just talking about lots of different stocks. I'm talking about diversification and how you make money, how income is coming, passive income. We're not, I'm not talking about just the money coming when you retire because you're still working. You're working, working, working. You're not financially free even once you retire. 
what I'm talking about is that you can stop trading your time for dollars. You have time freedom. You can have location freedom if that's what you want. It's not a matter of I'm tied to Kansas City, Missouri, because this is where my job is. This is where I see my patients. This is where I see my clients. That's not your thing anymore. You are financially independent. You can go wherever you want to go. And remember my definition of retirement, go do what you want to do with whom you want to do it when you want to do it. Okay. All right. I've got off track a little bit. So going from middle class to wealthy, again, it's not about just the amount of dollars you have coming in. It's about where those dollars are coming from. So when you start thinking about that strategy, I want to be wealthy, you're going to start working with someone who can help you find the type of assets that you want that will bring you the income that you desire so that you can become financially independent and wealthy. You could be investing in things like real estate or stocks that bring you a dividend, reduce your consumer debt. Believe me, wealthy people have debt. They have the kind of debt that is being paid by someone else. So they're using other people's money or leverage to be able to purchase the things that is an asset to them and bringing the income in. So the income from that asset covers the debt and puts money into my pocket. Does that make sense? So the thing is covered. I hope that makes sense to you. So debt in and of itself is not a bad thing. Consumer debt, credit card debt is not helpful. We do go there sometimes. And sometimes we even use credit card debt. We're getting into some deeper things here. Credit card debt to buy an asset. And it only is good. You want to use that strategy when you know that asset's going to cover the payment on that credit card. Then that thing is truly an asset. You're borrowing from your credit card company so you can buy this thing that's going to put money into your pocket that you can use to pay off that credit card debt. And once that credit card debt is gone, you now have this asset out here that's just putting pot money into your pocket. Does that make sense? We're getting some stuff here, so hang in there. But using these different kinds of strategies is what the wealthy do. This is the wealthy thought process. How am I going to make more money? I'm going to make more money by using somebody else's money, whether it's a bank, whether it's some investors into your project, your real estate project, to help you build the thing. And you're going to pay them also. They're making money also. But that is how you are building your financial future. Do we use net worth as a benchmark for wealth? Some do. And say, once your net worth, which is all of your assets minus your liabilities, is what your net worth. Then there, this article that I saw used a $5 million net worth, I'm sorry, $2 million net worth to be considered wealthy. Well, that's all a mindset, right? If you have a million dollars net worth and you are covering your expenses without having to go to work, you are thinking, you may be thinking you're wealthy. And if you think you're wealthy, you are wealthy. Remember, a lot of it is mindset, okay? So, the other thing about net worth is that when you start talking about accredited investors, and I'm going to have an episode that talks that gives a lot of these definitions for you, but an accredited investor is, an, is a person who makes at least $200,000 a year and expects to do so for the next two years or has a million dollar net worth, not including their primary residence. Those investors have the opportunity to invest in things that non-accredited investors may not ever have the ability to do. So if you meet that, if you are in that category, make $200,000 or more per year, did it last year, expect to do it for the near future that you can see, or have a million dollars net worth, not counting your home, then you are an accredited investor. If you're married or have a partner, it's $300,000 if you use the two of you of income, still a million dollars net worth. Okay, hope that makes sense. So again, true wealth is more than just high income or net worth. It's about financial freedom and the capacity to maintain a lifestyle and standard of living that is with, that without compromising your financial security. Let me say that again. True wealth 
is more than just high income or is more than just high income or substantial net worth. It includes financial freedom and the ability to maintain your standard of living or the standard of living that you desire without compromising your financial security. Make sense? It's not going to happen, guys. You're not going to necessarily get to that financial freedom without the passive income. Passive income is money coming in whether you go to work or not. You do have to do some work to begin to build passive income. I'm not going to lie to you. There are things to learn before you start investing for that passive income. Will you lose? It's possible. But if you don't play the game, you will never get there. So my goal at Money With Mission is that you lose less than you would lose if you did it on your own. Remember, investing with a mentor, investing with someone who's done it before. And if you don't know my story, go listen to my story. I've learned a ton in the most painful ways. And I don't want that to happen for you. I want to do my best to keep you from having to learn those lessons in the painful ways. Let's get you learning before you invest. I'm telling you this, you guys, because this is what I did. I started investing before I actually learned everything, lost everything, and then decided to learn. So let's not have you guys doing it backwards like me. Let's get into the learning like we're doing now so that we can then invest smartly. Passive income allows for a accumulation of wealth over time. You got to understand, just because you start investing in real estate or stocks that give you a dividend doesn't mean you're going to be wealthy or have that income that lets you stop working in six months. It may take five years. It may take a couple of cycles of investing in things to get to the point where you've got enough to invest that gives you the income that lets you be financially free. That doesn't make sense to you. Listen to that again. It is not necessarily going to be the first things you invest in that are going to make you financially free. So again, a lesson I had to learn. Start investing in single family houses. We're bringing in $100 a month income. Woohoo, that was great, but I can't quit my job for on $100 a month. It took some time. It took several years of several different investments, building up, building up, building up to be able to finally say, hey, I don't have to be a urologist. I don't have to do urology if I don't want to. Money's coming from these other sources that lets me be able to decide whether I want to be a urologist and work as a urologist. I'll always be a urologist, you guys. Work as a urologist. Does that make sense? So if you're ready to start, if you're thinking about starting, let's get started. I don't want you to wait until you're just like, I can't take it anymore and you're burned out. Can't do it. I'm sick of it. And you have no choice because you didn't plan. Planning from the beginning. You may love working your job as a surgeon, physician, lawyer, whatever it is you're doing. You may love it the whole time you're doing it. And now you just have this money coming in because now you can do more vacations. Now you can do all the things you want to do, whatever. If you never need the money that you're bringing in passively, perfect. If you do, It's there, right? You have the option. You're not stuck. And to me, having the option of whether I want to go to work or not makes working so much more fun. When you can say to somebody's coming at your face and you're like, like a woman was talking to me, one of the administrators of where I'm helping my friend right now. And I was like, if you don't need me anymore, you just need to tell me. And I will march my happy butt running out of here and go do something else. It'll be just fine. So that I can't tell you when I was realized that I could say that and realize, oh, you know, I don't need this job. I can, you guys tell me you don't need me anymore and I'm going to go and be just fine. That is so freeing. And you can put up with a lot more when you know you don't have to. I hope you guys, I hope that makes sense. I hope you can feel that, to know that, to be able to have somebody coming at you like, I don't have to put up with this. I do not have to put up with this. I can choose to put up with it or I can choose to say, you know what, you guys, I got my money. I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm out. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine being able to decide what you're going to do every day. 
what patients you're going to see, what surgeries you're going to do, what meeting you're going to go to for that matter. Think about that. How does that feel? How does it feel to know that you have the financial ability to walk away from that job? Let's say you've got a relationship that's not serving you well. So you've got a relationship where your partner is bringing in all the money and your money is, you know, what it is, but it's not enough that you could go out and do your own thing. You're stuck. You're stuck in that relationship. Imagine what it feels like to be able to walk away from any job or relationship that is not in your best interest. That is the goal of Money with Mission. Every woman have the ability to walk away from any job or relationship that is not in her best interest. Feel that. Feel what that feels like to know that you could do that. Your mom is sick. I got to go and I'm fine. My child needs to go to get specialty care somewhere because of some devastating illness and where we live will not be able to take care of her. You got to go. It's not even, it's like, to have to think about that, that I can't do it because of whatever, I, I don't have the money, I have to stay here and do my job, otherwise I can't afford the care? Mm, that's tough. That's tough. I feel that in my stomach. We always want to have the ability, we want to have the control over the things that we can control. And you can control the money coming into your life as long as you learn the things you need to learn to be able to invest in things that are going to bring you the outcomes that you're looking for. I think I got off a little bit, you guys. Hang in there with me. For some of us, creating a side gig or a side hustle, bringing in money from a business. Some of you out there are very creative and have invented tools for your business or have invented for your career. Like, you know, I don't know, for surgeons, Dr. DeBakey developed his DeBake, DeBakey clamp or DeBakey pickups. You know, all the different medical tools and devices that are developed, oh, some, it came from somebody's head. And that can bring you income. Once you've got the thing developed, once you've got the business running, the things you could do with that, sell it, the business, I mean, and you have a licensing fee. So any entrepreneurship that's going to ultimately be able to be sold or run on its own without you being behind the thing, unless you want to be, is income. That helps to increase that passive income coming into you so that you can do what you want to do when you want to do it with whom you want to do it. That's the definition of retirement, you guys. Hang in there. We're almost done. Remember, to get to where you want to go, well, let's look at it this way. We all have gone to professional school. We went to school to learn our craft, and we went to school for a long time, and we spent a lot of money. Don't necessarily need to be the one to know everything about how our money is going to work for us. We need to understand the concepts. We need to direct the people that are actually placing our money so that we completely understand what's happening. Do not abdicate that. Do not give that away. That is something you need to understand with the help of a professional money manager, a fiduciary, someone who can really explain to you why they're saying the things they're saying. Or when you're explaining to them what you want your money to do, they can tell you the places to help you figure out where to put your money so that it can do for you what you want it to do. It's not about how we're doing our 401ks when we put it in our Fidelity account or our Vanguard account or whatever financial vehicle you have, put it in there and don't think about it. Yes, in the Fidelity account that I have, I can choose the right, a different basket of mutual funds. But it's not the direction that I necessarily want things to go. I don't have a person that I can call on a regular basis who's going to explain to me what's the best thing to do with the next money I'm putting in there. That is an important thing to do. And sometimes you have to pay that person. Listen, sometimes you have to pay that person. That means that they are working for you, not working for themselves and paying themselves by trading your things or by skimming off the top and not in an illegal way, in the legal way that many of the financial planners are able to do by the way they structure your deals for you. So having a fiduciary or someone who is working for you, you pay them, they make money because that's what you pay them to do. 
they're that's how they're making their money, not necessarily off the trades they make for you, or not necessarily off the money you're making and they take a percentage. So you really, really want to understand how your financial planner is making money. Does that make sense? That that all of the thinking about the money this way gets you too wealthy. It's not about money just being out there doing its thing and running its business, doing all the thing on its own. You have to manage it. You have to figure out where it needs to go. And once you get the basic understanding, it's not hard. Promise you guys, this is not rocket science. If you are a physician, you can do this. If you're an attorney, you can do this. If you're a busy physician, a busy attorney, a busy CEO, a busy professional mom, we can do this. This is very, very understandable. And once you've got it, a few minutes a day, a few hours a week, and you've got your money doing what you want it to do. Okay. And no, sometimes it becomes overwhelming thinking, oh my God, one more thing to do, one more thing to put it on my plate. It's not. And having people who are there with you to walk that path with you, to help you know that you're not out there by yourself. And when you're saying, I just don't get it, it's like, I didn't get that either. Here, here's how, here's what made me understand that. Let me help you. What are you trying to do again? You said, I thought last week you said you wanted to do, and now you're on this. Let's get focused. We have to really decide where we're going so that we can get there. If you're changing direction every other week, every other month, you don't get anywhere. Okay. I got on my soapbox again, you guys. That's what I'm doing. Okay. The other th one more thing about being wealthy, and again, which is back to taxes, the wealthy think about taxes. They think about investing and managing their investments in a tax efficient manner. You don't have to know the tax code. You just need to know somebody who does and somebody who does and is willing to work with you and help you understand how, what's the best thing to do with your money. There was a time when I never talked to my accountant except when it was time to do taxes. And then I realized, hmm, I could have, what, I think I don't remember exactly what, how it happened, but I think at one point we were doing taxes and I said, well, when did this thing happen? I can't remember what it was. It's like, well, that happened whenever. Like, but if you had done it at this point, then we would have been able to do this so that it would have made your tax liability less. Oh, it clicked for me. Now, rarely make a financial move, a big financial move, not even buying a car. My, well, before I bought my most recent car, I talked to my accountant. What's the best car for me to buy? And when should I buy it for the most tax efficiency? We talked about it for, I don't know, 20 minutes. And it was a car, the cars we came up with. It was a range of cars that I could get. They were all in the rate of the things that I would want to buy. Went out and did it and became a tax efficient thing for me for that year. I bought it in 22, I think. And that helped me have no tax liability for that year, you guys. I'm telling you, I made a lot of money and paid very little into taxes. Actually, I don't think I paid any. And it was it's legal, you guys. This is not like we're hiding money anywhere. It's not. This is the tax code. It is using the tax code the way it's meant to be used. All right. So becoming wealthy is a lot of things. It is a mindset. It is having income from a diversified portfolio. It's having passive income. It's being able to maintain your lifestyle without having to train trade your time for dollars. I love it. I want to keep it. I want you to have it. Again, I want money with mission, goal, mission, vision. The reason it was made so that every woman has the financial ability to walk away from any job or relationship that is not in her best interest. I want that for each and every one of you. Think about it. If you're ready to, to jump on and let's get to work, give me a call. We'll put the link to make to schedule a call in the show notes. If you're not ready yet, keep listening to the podcast, okay? Just keep listening. Learn as much as you can learn. And when you're ready, I'll be here. All right? Take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button for me. It will help me get the guests on here that you want. It just lets me know you're out there. It lets me know that this is getting to people. I really would love to see you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to say something to me about this podcast, 
send me an email. We'll have it in the show notes. I thought I knew the, the email address, but sit, put it in the show notes and we'll get you. I'll get it and I will respond. Have a great rest of your week, you guys. Take care. You've been listening to Money With Mission. There are projects happening right now where you can have a great financial return while positively affecting the lives of others. To learn more about our opportunities, go to moneywithmission.com.